Would you consider doing a DeWalt Power Detect versus FlexVolt video? Would like to see how the DeWalt Power Detect compared against the FlexVolt Advantage. I can't prove this, but I think the power is the same with the same battery. I'd like to see Power Detect DeWalt versus FlexVolt Advantage. FlexVolt Advantage tools are just Power Detect tools, but sold at Home Depot. That's the entire reason they exist. Power Detect and FlexVolt Advantage is just a marketing gimmick. Would be interested to see Power Detect feature would make any difference using an appropriate 60 volt battery? People seem to be confused or at least want clarity on what DeWalt's top of the range 20 volt tools are and how they perform. Or do they need any help with this question? Power Detect is Lowe's, FlexVolt Advantage is Home Depot, that's it. Everyone knows they are the same tools sold in different stores. The whole FlexVolt Advantage thing is made up anyways, no one believes DeWalt's specs. All of my Power Detect tools outperform FlexVolt Advantage, not the real FlexVolt, I've seen it firsthand. FlexVolt Advantage versus Power Detect is the biggest lie in power tools right now. Okay, well you got our attention. Is DeWalt lying to you? Are these even their top of the range 20 volt tools? We're the numbers folks, so we're just gonna serve you a hot plate of facts and put this thing to bed by getting pretty much the full FlexVolt Advantage line from Home Depot and the full Power Detect line from Lowe's and settling the score. Because while DeWalt advertises differentiating specs between most of these models, a lot of it is hidden and they do a mighty poor job as is clarifying which tools are their top of the line and which aren't. And we find their specs to be sometimes misleading at best. Let's settle this. Up first is drills, the DCD-999 Flexible Advantage and the DCD-998 Power Detect. Like a game of Highlights Magazine Spot the Difference for adults, these tools look almost identical. The Power Detect is rated at 1072 unit watts out, which is their measurement system, and the Flexible Advantage 1219 unit watts out, and it's supposed to prefer or take advantage of FlexVolt batteries somehow, even though it's a 20 volt tool and can't use its 60 volt pickups. But it's supposed to sense that it is one and juice up the tool. Here's what torque it makes on our dyno brake with the included 6 amp hour flex volt battery. Thirty-six foot-pounds. For your reference, that's quite good among drills in general. Now for the six amp hour XR battery, not flexible and uses twenty-one seven hundred cells inside instead. Thirty-eight point two foot-pounds. And here's a five amp hour power stack. Thirty-seven point seven five foot-pounds, also higher. So that flexing voltage advantage seems to be a bit suspect so far. But let's take a look at the power detect, which is said to be on the order of making twelve percent less juice. This is a tool that's supposed to detect when it has an 8 amp hour battery on and perform best. Though we've also found some verbiage that says it's supposed to do this for any 21700 cell XR battery. Here's what the included in the kit 8 amp hour XR battery. 35 foot pounds, so less than the flexible advantage is making with its included battery, but this is just a median test and a 1 foot pound difference. Not a lot. Here's what the 6 amp hour XR battery. 39.6 foot pounds, so both tools preferring a battery they don't come with, at least one of those tools being one it shouldn't prefer at all. But that's torque after all, they rate these tools in watts, something more difficult to fool, it's just straight up motor output at this point. We'll focus on tools in their high settings since you just saw torque in low, but it's a similar story for both settings here. With the included battery, the Power Detect makes 850 watts with the flexible advantage again doing a little bit better with its included battery to the tune of 860 watts, or about the same. Using the battery neither of them should do best with, but both of them seem to prefer the 6 amp hour XR with the Samsung 30T cells inside, that becomes 910 and 950 for the Power Detect, meaning what have we learned here? If you had to pick one, the Power Detect is more powerful and not 12% less, but and this is across all batteries we tested, low, high, torque, averaging one close to 2% more beans and not 14% up, but about 1% down for the flexible advantage here. So you can see why people are questioning the specs on these little exclusives DeWalt is handing out to stores. These are insanely close and if anything backwards from what the brand is advertising, it really calls into question this entire scheme of tool class marketing. 
But we bought more tools to help settle this debate. Grinders first, we got the DCG415 Power Detect and DCG416 Flexible Advantage. Even the model numbering here trying to tell you who's on top, which didn't so much work out up here. This is supposed to provide 1350 max watts out, not unit watts out now for some reason, and this one 1550 or 15% more. We already had a flexible advantage grinder from a past grinder head to head, so we bought a new power detect for this episode to see what it can do. These are more simple tools, no multi-speed gearbox here or clutch or settings, just a motor and a right angle output, so we should be able to get real precise on the differences here. The flexible advantage with what DeWalt often includes in various kits, the 6 amp hour flexible, makes 780 watts. That's a lot of sauce for a grinder. What's even more interesting to us is that unlike the drills, the 6XR makes less on this tool, 750 watts, meaning it prefers an equivalent flexible battery, so finally lending some legitimacy to this advantage thing that we're reading about. The power detect on the other hand, it's supposed to be soulmates with the 8 amp hour XR, and that's not in the cards this time with 670 watts. So you're able to upgrade that output with two smaller capacity battery options, the 6 amp hour XR again, doing well with these power detect models, 720 watts, but not matching the flexible advantage yet. The 5 amp hour power stack brings things up to 740 watts, just about matching it now. But the battery that ultimately is going to bring this one up into that territory is the 9 amp hour flexible. Not because it's flexible at all, in my opinion, but because it's built like an HD 12.0 M18 battery, but better. Instead of three rows of Samsung 40Ts, it's got three rows of 30Ts that make it like a 6 amp hour XR, but times 1.5, just a lot of discharge amps on tap. That brings this power detect up to a full 790 watts. Of course, you can put that same battery on the tool that advertises flexibility type things to the tune of 850 watts now, all around a more powerful tool and battery for battery, we usually also saw a 100 RPM increase under load. So what are we looking at here? This tool is supposed to be 15% up on the other. This is the range of power we got from the various battery packs, and we saw about 8 to 12% of that. Pretty good. It enjoys flexible batteries best, as advertised as well. The Power Detect liked a 5 amp hour power stack and a 9 amp hour flexible best, so even when they're right, they're not all the way on the mark from what we've seen based on this battery preference detecting business. All right, and to settle the score, because we're sort of one in one here, the biggest, most powerful examples of this odd matchup, seven and a quarter inch Cirque Sauce, or according to DeWalt, not the most powerful with 1300 and 1400 unit watts out, which varies a little bit depending on the source, but no matter how you look at it, both of these being rated under the grinders, despite a much larger and inline motor, and well, we've tested the power detect in our Cirque Saw bracket playoffs and can confirm that's a bit bunk. The DCF 574 makes more umph than a grinder with 740 watts using the included 8 amp hour, and you guessed it, more power with the 6XR in the form of 810. Which hey, maybe that qualifies for the detection going on based on what we've read, but the 5 amp hour power stack, this is something we've noticed with newer models of DeWalt as well. It likes it even more, up to 840 watts, a battery that's usually on par or around a 6 amp hour XR, so not a lot of detection from what we can tell going on here, just taking advantage of more discharge rate, which even a dumb tool can do. Now the DCF573 is a lower model number tool despite being flexible advantage, which is a change, and not a tool we've tested before or ranked. So let's see how it does here before it takes on the likes of Flex with their stack lithium, Milwaukee, and DeWalt 60 volt for that matter in our upcoming high power saw finale. With the kit type battery 6 amp hour flex volt, 3 rows of 18650s, we get, yeah, it dunks on the power detect with 1000 and 30 watts. It's not close, ladies and gentlemen. This is definitely the most dramatic flexible advantage tool difference. As evidenced by how either a 6 amp hour XR or 5 amp hour power stack do, which is to say well, but not nearly as well as they would normally do on a, just a bog standard XR tool, coming in less here than a 6 amp hour flex volt with 930 and 970 watts, the Flexvolt Advantage tool seen some concrete gains from Flexvolt packs despite using them in their 20 volt architecture. Of course, the 9 amp hour on the Power Detect sees gains as well though, just because it's a better pack, but not enough here to pass up its bigger brother, 900 watts, nice try. 
and all said, really a, quite a powerful combo for those of you with this, but the flexible advantage just doubles down on that with the 9 amp hour flexible goodness, with lots of knob turning, turning and turning those screws to get this thing to quit, 1120 watts. 1120, that's enough to likely put this in the top spot among Cirque Saws tested so far. And here, 840 up to 1030 and 900 to 1120, that's a roughly 24% advantage. Three times what DeWalt is implying over here with the ratings on these tools, detect that power detect. It's not even detecting the correct battery to do best with here. So let's answer those burning questions or correct some assumptions we found in the comments. Are flexible advantage and power detect DeWalt tools the same? Uh, no. Is flexible advantage better? On average, yes, about 11% better with similar or less vibration as we saw too. Measuring the vibration on the power detect, we noticed it was measurably higher than on the flexible advantage, and that's interesting too. On the drills, it's about a wash or the flexible advantage being slightly below the power detect. Does power detect prefer 8 amp hour batteries or at least 21700s? Uh, it does not prefer 8 amp hour batteries and in general prefers 5 amp hour power stacks and 9 amp hour flex volts the most, so no. Does Flexible Advantage prefer flexible batteries? Yes, 6 amp hour flex volt and 9 amp hour flex volt outperform other 21700 cell and power stack batteries overall except for the drill. Are DeWalt specs and features accurate? Not from what we can tell, on power percentage difference or battery preference for the power detect and the drills may have just been finished before this entire line changed, so they didn't see much difference, if any, as their circuit boards even look pretty mirror-like. What should I buy? Probably Flexible Advantage. DeWalt's best battery is their 9 amp hour, and it opens doors to you buying their 60 volt flexible tools too, not just their XR tools. So overall, better choice for all your options. Now does this make power detect tools bad? Especially not in the drills case, but by and large, the tools are still at or near the top in either flavor. It's no wonder people have called this stuff into question, though we feel DeWalt is an industry leader at confusing their customers. Both their new crazy powerful mid and high torques look just like their decade old, much weaker ones that they replaced, and I still walk by them in stores and not know which is which. They release a tiny but really monumental impact drive in the DCF 850 under Atomic, but then the DCF845, lower number, is the XR model, which should be their top of the line, but tests with lower torque. And the 850 is branded XR overseas. They also rebrand older models as Craftsman V20, and they dye tools red to make Mac tools. Of course, they have 60 volt flexible tools in addition to this, 120 volt flexible tools to boot, and yet they still made a beast like this guy just 20 volt and half inch drive when it could topple an XGT 3 quarter inch. They've really been making some impressive moves lately, but the average consumer could get easily lost in the shuffle. Being suspicious of brand specs and marketing placement of these tools is unfortunately something you sort of have to do these days with tools and channels like ours and other great examples out there will remain doing what we do to help make sense of it so you can spend your dollars where they make the biggest difference we make episodes at least every friday click buttons to see those and thanks for watching